Today is November 11th, 2014, and ironically, it is Veterans Day, uh, which is a United States holiday for individuals who serve in the military for the United States. And I am going to address some of the um, forms of torture that the United States perpetrated against me and premeditated. And aside from, um, you know, I recently just put, put up a video that explained how I was being tortured, and actually right now as I'm speaking, I'm, I'm, they, I was not being tortured for about an entire day and a half, and right now as I'm talking about this next subject, which I know they don't want me to talk about, I am getting tortured again right now to my um, left side of my face and my teeth and my ear. And honestly, it's their problem because they're responsible for what they've done and they have not had any kind of willingness to be accountable to themselves, to their own country, or to the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. And um, the fact that the majority of the government tolerates the kinds of things that the United States has done to um, to me, and, and I'm not sure, but if they did, if they've done this to me, I'm sure they've done it to other people as well. Is um, is a horrible thought. So um, what I want to talk about is rape, and how the United States government premeditated. Um, ways on how they could rape me and yet have it concealed to look like they weren't raping me. Which really doesn't seem like something that would take that much thought or effort, does it? Because, you know, anyone could, you know, rape someone, rape a, a woman, let's say, you know, whether it's a man or a woman. Because there are men that are raped too, and kids. But um, they could pick someone, rape them, and just say, "Oh, they're just lying." I mean, that's what they do all the time. So you know, what kind of premeditated thought really goes into that? Because if people are known to rape others and then just lie about it, it doesn't seem like that much of a um, quote-unquote plot or premeditated activity, you know, that the United States government is sponsoring and um, encourages. So, um, the difference, so I do not, actually, I want to say first, I don't discount at all anyone who is just arbitrarily raped for any reason, um, spontaneously or not, premeditated or not, uh, it's, you know, the same thing. But what I am going to talk about is how the United States government actually constructed strategies um, using individuals from um, who work for police, who work with the FBI, CIA, and the Pentagon. And they really covered all their bases with that because I think they just didn't want any kind of report to ever go out against any of them. So they made sure all of them, or some members from all of these agencies and groups were involved in the premeditation and strategy of how to force a little girl to accept rape and then try to turn it around and make it look like this little girl wants to be raped, which is what they did to me. And um, when I say little girl, I don't mean that as you know, um, like a, a way, a term of endearment for a woman, or non-endearment for a woman. I mean, I was little. Um, one of the earliest strategies that they used against me, I was about age four. And I uh, about age four to five that I remember. I, I know it goes back to age three. But 
actually, and I take that back because there is another set of circumstances that I distinctly remember, and I was still drinking from a bottle at that time. And um, and I was not, you know, drinking from a bottle for a really long time as a toddler. I was maybe I still had a bottle when I was age two or up to age two, something like that. But past that, I was drinking from a sippy cup. So some of their um, one of their strategies on how to rape me and then make it look like I wanted to be raped was um, devised when I was two years old. It's probably devised earlier than that, but I was two years old when I distinctly remember some of the things that they did. And the reason I remember some of these things when I was that young um, is because they did it so many times. Because when they, um, when I call these rape strategies, strategies they were not it wasn't like a something that they tried out on me a couple of times it wasn't like one or two people did the same thing a couple of times and it really looked like they were colluding together and they you know these one or two individuals had a plan against me you know um when when I say, and you know, pardon my halting speech when I'm talking about this because I didn't prepare this. I'm not, you know, rehearsing this as if um, giving you like a caked and baked description or um, story of what the United States did just to defame someone or, you know, whatever. So I'm just speaking from the top of my head um, about this. And so there will be some clarifications as they go along. But one of the things that I want to clarify is when I say they did this several times, they didn't just do it a couple of times on these various strategies on how to rape me. Um, when I say many times, I mean, um, anywhere from like distinctly remembering um, anywhere from 25 to 100 times of incidents per or more um, per strategy, because they and when I say per strategy. I mean, they came up with like a little book of various ways that they were going to um, rape me and make it look like I wanted to be raped. So they had, um, it's really incredible the amount of time that they spent on this and um, the kind of damages that they did to me as um, a human being. But, and I'm really not sure why they didn't just pick one strategy and go with it. But I guess they thought, well, you know, um, we want to rape her under any occasion, in any circumstance. So they came up with a variety of ways to rape me. And then possibly part of the reason that they did that was that when I was older and they wanted to repeat the same thing to me when I was older maybe they thought it would sound more unbelievable like this one situation happened this way and it was supposedly rape this other situation happened this other way and it was supposedly rape and how can you look like you're kind of agreeing to these different situations of rape that are different and so it's possible that they wanted to make make um, give their rape strategies a little bit of variety um, so that it sort of distanced one strategy from the other and it didn't look like they were all <laughs> all together. Um, I think that's pro probably why they did this. But um, and when I say, you know, 25 to 100 times and someone would hear 
something like 100 times, like that sounds like such an exaggeration. What do I mean by that? Do I mean I was raped 100 times on one form of the technique of, um, that they wanted to use for raping me? Well, what I mean by that is that the methods and means were how they were approaching um, the brainwashing of me and repeated uh, what they call grooming. But it wasn't really grooming, it was more like what they call, also term, um, use a term called programming a person. Like in government terms, when someone gets programmed, it basically means they get um, sort of unconsciously forced to perform or do a certain kind of action at a certain time. And usually it's drilled into that person's brain and into their sub psyche and subconscious um, by repeatedly doing the same thing or having that, that person do the same thing back to them um, a number of times. And then they call it programming. Um, and also, uh, you know, when, you, when someone gets programmed, they have different ideas for what their, the trigger is going to be. You know, what is the, um, what's at, when it gets to this point, then what reaction do we want? When we do this, then what reaction do we want? It's like, pretty much like programming a show of your television. Um, you decide what exact, what show you want to watch, at what time of day, and there are specific controls and instructions that you use on your remote to make sure that that happens the way that you hope to have it happen. So that's kind of what um, programming is, but grooming is a term that's used a little more freely with regard to sex abuse and someone when someone tries to groom someone it kind of means almost in a sense it's been um, degraded to almost mean seduce someone. If you groom someone it almost just kind of sounds like well they were groomed to accept the attentions of this priest for example. And um, and that would imply that well there was some consensual some slight consensual um, behavior on the part of the person who's in any kind of relationship with the priest because they were quote unquote groomed to um, to be that way or they were prepped or primed or whatever for a specific situation and um, so when I say, so that kind of all goes together with what I'm talking about when I'm saying that um, the United States committed crimes against me um, for decades and practiced and worked on practicing their methods and strategy for so, um, such a, um, so many repeated instances when I was younger. Um, it kind of gives you more of an idea of why someone would repeat something over and over you know, for a little kid. And it's, it's kind of like um, people who spank their kids. You know, the, the kid gets too close to a certain um, side of the road, and then maybe they'll spank their kid. If the kid does it again, they'll spank their kid again. If the kid still does it, they'll spank their kid again. And it's um, an attempt to have that child learn that for that action, there is this consequence. And what's very sad is that the United States was choosing to um, drill that into my head as um, consequences of what was going to be done to me if I did not accept um, being raped by the United States government employees. And um, they used a lot of employees. And they also trafficked me to other countries because I think they didn't, they knew that there was a concern that um, got outside of the United States into the United Nations or some other group 
and they might have a problem.